Hello, so we are back and this time let's answer the most asked question. It is worth on 2025 a repair business? Can we make a living from it? And that's why we are here. Now you know me, I'm uh, doing laptop repairs mainly. Repairs is part of the electronics and when, I, when we are speaking about electronics, we are speaking about repairs, design, servicing and many other stuff. So still worth it in 2025? Yeah, definitely. The problem is what you see from outside or from my video looks like, you know, it's a complicated thing to repair like a laptop motherboard. But the truth is, if the people, they'll know how easy it is, probably everyone it will fix uh, laptops. And laptop repairs, the first thing what you have to learn, yeah, before learning actually doing repairs, it's what you can fix and what you cannot fix. And that's very simple, yeah? So soon as you know what you cannot fix, then it's very easy because you'll pick up the jobs what you can fix. Now, I know social media is crazy and, uh, yeah, YouTube, uh, you have to trust me, yeah? What you can fix on a laptop motherboard, it's actually anything related with power, power delivery. So basically, anything with power supplies, you can fix. What you cannot fix, it's actually anything related with the CPU, chipset, and any digital data. That's something you cannot diagnose, you cannot check. So all what you need, yeah, is to avoid any kind of job like uh, laptop coming on with blue screen, freezing, coming on with no picture. If you avoid this kind of jobs, you can make a living from the laptop repairs. And now you'll say, yeah, sorry, but still, you know, even the power is complicated. You need experience, you need knowledge. Well, actually, no, really. Whatever I'm doing from my videos, if you've seen, all what I'm doing, playing with the power supply, multimeter, and everything is spinning around the ohm law. That's all what you need to repair not only laptops, anything. When I'm saying the ohm law, doesn't really mean you know, learning the ohm law, that it will be no helpful. It's actually understanding the ohm law, the relationship between the resistance, voltage, and current. This can be a little bit challenging, and it will involve probably a lot of DIY till a point you will understand the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. But as soon as you figure it out, you can basically fix anything. Probably like a beginner, it will see this, a laptop motherboard. It is a laptop motherboard? Well, maybe. What I'm seeing here, it's a resistor, a variable resistor. Means, yeah, if I'm checking the current at the charging port, I will have different resistance, depends what the laptop is doing. When the board is off, the board it will take nearly no current. That's mean a very high resistance. Soon as I power on the laptop, the board start drawing current. That's mean a very low resistance. So this board, it's actually a variable resistor. What makes this board a variable resistor? Uh, the laptop motherboards, they have power supplies, switching power supply, which uh, they are all connected together, yeah? You have like a star configuration, they are connected to something which I call the main power rail. All these power supplies, you can see them like a power supplies, but actually they are variable resistors. So the sum of the power supplies, it will give you actually the total uh, motherboard resistance. Easy, right? We made a channel a few years ago where I started teaching Dan about switching power supplies. You can have a look a little bit of that channel. Kind of boring, but you can, uh, you know, have a pretty good idea about how the power supplies are working and how the ohm law applies to switching power supplies. Starting from this point, I'm going to do some uh, tutorials with uh, laptop repairs, basically uh, some shortcuts, because I've already, we have like probably 1,500 videos, repair videos on this channel. So it's not like bringing new information on uh, those videos, but actually, you know, they are shortcut and uh, important points to carry like laptop repairs. I'm working on it. And now you will say, Yes, sorry, it looks like, you know, yeah, good money. But still, you know, probably there are better jobs. Well, electronics, it will give you a little bit of freedom. And freedom is very expensive. 
Freedom is the ability to withdraw from people or the power of isolation. So a repair guy, it will always be on your desk, you know, far from the people. And if I want to fix it today, I can fix it. If not, I can fix it tomorrow. I always enjoy this kind of freedom. Another important aspect is you don't even have to do motherboard repairs. I know so many repair shops, repair shops, yeah? They don't even have a multimeter. So what they are doing, you know, battery replacement screens, keyboard, windows, uh, hard drives, and on the phone, same stuff. And they are not really carrying repairs. They are there from like many years and they have no issues. So motherboard repairs, it's something on top. So if you think like starting a business, you don't even have to fix motherboards. There are so many things to repair before motherboards. Probably there are a lot of people fixing motherboards and they it will agree with me. And there are nice money from the motherboard repairs. Now a motherboard repair never end like a motherboard repair. Now I seen on the video and you know, on the past video of doing motherboard repairs and we have people on the chat. Oh, sorry, why don't clean the phone? Why don't replace the thermal paste? And actually that's apart from the business. So like every you fix a motherboard. You fix it. You let the customer know, I fix your motherboard. On that point, all you have to be is to be honest. Uh, I fix your motherboard, but your thermal paste is dry, which is not true. Most likely, the thermal paste is dry. And, you know, the heating has to be clean because, you know, the downside is not cleaning the, the fans, the heating, and not replacing the thermal paste. It tool increase uh, the motherboard working temperature, increasing the overall motherboard uh, working temperature. It will lead to more faults in in the future. So if you are not doing it already, you try to do it. Explain the customer, and ninety percent of the customer they will agree. Actually, replacing the thermal paste and cleaning the fans, which is a extra income from like the motherboard repair. It's not really point to share the price because here I'm on the UK and uh, everyone is a different country, different economy. Trying with a, like a work currency like pizza, I will say like one pizza and a half up to two pizza charging for, uh, you know, thermal paste replacement, a fan cleanup. Yeah, but that money comes on top of your motherboard repair work. Now, not everyone loves motherboard repairs, like laptop repairs. Well, it's a good income, especially when you combine the repairs with like selling. Customer fixing his laptop, maybe you want to buy a USB stick, maybe a cable. Laptop repair business combined with like a selling, uh, that's a computer business. And definitely you can make a living. Now you don't have to stop to the laptop repairs. Again, once you understand the home law, then basically you can fix anything. And the next thing is what is coming in mind, TVs. And you'll be surprised, but TVs are so easy to be fixed. You have like big boards, you don't need a microscope. Uh, usually you have like a power supply issue or a LED backlight problem. Now I made in the past uh, videos with TV repairs, fixing, you know, the power supply or fixing the backlight. And the backlight is quite simple to be fixed if you understand the ohm law. And what the ohm law is saying, you have a burn LED, you short the LED and everything will be fine, yeah? Even now, I remember I made so many videos trying to prove the point. Actually, shorting a LED, it will not burn the other's LED because the current, uh, it will be the same. The LED backlight is current control. So it doesn't matter if you have one LED or you have like a hundred, you have same current there. So you can skip like one LED, you'll see no difference. Two LEDs, if you short two LEDs, you'll see like a tiny shadow. Three LEDs, yeah. If you're sure free LEDs, maybe it's just better to replace the LED strip. So once you get a skill on the repair and you want to push it further, try to stay real. If you stay real, you can improve that skill. There are some limitations on this business and it's all related with the manufacturer. So if you stay away from, uh, you know, CPU, GPU, chipset, replacement, rebooting, stuff like that, you will be able to keep up a repair average probably over 75%. Every repair business is fighting for the right of the repair and uh, Intel, AMD, they are not selling chips. So whatever chip you find online, yeah, probably it's from a 
that motherboard. And don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking about wasting time. You say, okay, sorry, but I have time to waste. I can, I can try. Yeah, you can. It's not about the time. It's about, you say, you try one laptop, replace the CPU, not working. You try the second laptop, replace the chipset, not working. You, you try another one, replace the GPU, it's not working. It's about depression. Yeah, you will you, you'll get depressed, you know. And uh, you, you'll start to believe, uh, okay, maybe I'm not good enough. So it's all about the mental health. It's not because you are not good enough. The first lesson you have to learn is what you cannot fix. So all this, when we are speaking about CPU, GPU, this is a gamble. It's a Russian roulette. So maybe it will work. Maybe not. That's why staying on top of things what you can fix, like I said, everything related to the power, you have a pretty good chance, actually, to repair a lot of laptops. Then you have game console, then you have phones. No, it's not much to fix on a phone, but still, you know, a battery, a charging port, a screen still can be replaced. Then you have the tablets and so on. Now, another important aspect is understanding the risk. You are charging money for the risk. So this board is coming from, uh, obviously, the first thing what you do, you check online the price of the laptop. You don't want to damage that laptop more and having to pay. Happens to me, yeah, happens. Like a, once I melt the screen holding the hot air and I have to buy the screen and the screen was like over 800 pounds <laughs> and the job was like 200. So let's say the motherboard is coming from like a laptop, which is like 150 pounds online. What I will charge for the repair for a motherboard repair, probably it will, it will be around 70. But if I have like a gaming laptop, which online is like a thousand pound, probably I will charge for that repair along around 250 pounds up to 300. So that's how you make the price. You don't make the price based on the fault. You make the price as an overall motherboard repair for that specific model. We are not charging for the components which are replacing. We are charging for a motherboard repair because your risk has to be covered. In case things are going wrong, are going on the other side, yeah, you, has to, you have to be covered. So just a short recap, one more time, what you need to perform laptop repairs. First thing, what you need before starting doing anything, it's what you cannot fix. That's the first thing. After that, you can start learning the OM law. Or actually not learning, but understanding the OM law. And understanding the OM law probably to require a lot of DIY and playing a little bit of the electronics, there are a lot of electronic kits online. You can, you know, start building your stuff like a, the internet is full of schematics. You can pick whatever you want. So playing a little bit, you know, with voltage, current and resistor, it, it will bring your knowledge up to a point you understand what is the relationship between resistance, current and voltage. Now you'll say, okay, sorry, but I'm not quite happy with the laptop repairs. I want to do something else. You can do like, if you like cars, yeah, cars are really good pay. Especially now, you know, most of the cars, they have a lot of electronics inside. And it's not like, okay, so I have like a faulty module. I'm going and I'm taking another one from a different car and I can move it here. No, you have to fix it. Because otherwise it has to be replaced only by the manufacturer and programmed by the manuf manufacturer. I would say probably <laughs> there are like probably more money compared with the laptop repairs. Uh, I seen a video today, <laughs> just, you know, just a short, I just seen it today, yeah? Uh, it was about a car and a gentleman which was doing a video about right of repair and what that has to be done. Let me just search it quickly. Now, the video is about a light bulb. The gentleman has a YouTube channel, Car Wizard, right to repair, not even a bulb is safe anymore. The long story short, it's actually the car has a light bulb issue. It's actually the red red light from the back of the car. How is called? The one which is coming on when you start the headlights. Forgot the name. Anyway, it's not important. Important is the both lights. They have they have two different uh, tracks which they are going to a computer, and one light is not working. Now the gentleman on the video is saying. I know it's very simple to fix it. I can take a wire from the other light and run it here, but the other light is, you know, from uh, the output of, of the computer. So I risk to burn even the other one. So he sent the customer to the dealership. And there is the customer on the chat saying 
he went to the dealership who charged him 1,400 plus 200. So 1,600 for a light bulb. Now here is where the skill is coming. And uh, we're understanding the ohm law. It will help you to perform this repair for, let's say, like half price. I mean, from my point of view, you don't have to use a wire. The load on the computer, it will be double. But we can use like a transistor, probably like an NPN transistor, like one pound transistor. Most likely there is a LED light bulb, which, you know, is not taking that much power. Or let's say you don't have that skill, you can use like a relay. So either like a transistor or relay, you will have no load on, um, on, the, on that power line from the computer. And that's how the, you know, the ohm law in electronics uh, can help you to achieve whatever you want. If you are looking for money or if you are looking for just, you know, challenge. The repair business is kind of like, you know, detective work. Somehow you have to be smarter than the fault and uh, try to figure it out. Then if you don't like the repairs, then you have uh, design. And design is nice. There are a lot of people, they love designing stuff. Then you have PCBs. So once you design the schema, then you design the PCB. And after you design the schematic and the PCB, you have a product, which you can sell it or uh, whatever. So what about the future? What will happen in the future with the repairs? Well, you will be surprised. On these days, everything is electronic. So this can really die. From next year, they are shipping robots, like doing chores inside of the house. This one is available for order. You can believe that? Yeah. So the robots are coming. So on the market, it will always be laptops, tablets, phone, cars, robots, and it will always be something to, to fix or repair. So if you are looking to start a business, my advice, try to start a business or fixing anything. If you try to go like on, on a side, like, okay, fixing only MacBooks or fixing only GPUs, uh, you will need a solid uh, customer base. And a customer base is getting built in years. So that's not something which is helpful for a startup. Again, I know looking complicated, I say, okay, sorry, but how can I fix anything? And it's more easy than you think. Again, all what you need, it's actually the home law. Because the whole electronics is based on the home law. And once you know the ohm law, then, you know, we have so many videos on the channel to give you an idea what, what the components are doing and how they are related to each, each other. So I'm going to stop here. Be sure uh, you keep an eye on the channel and uh, see you on the next one. Bye.